time-consuming course of injections, but safety trials have to be held first. Twelve-year-old Olga Dimitriou has to undergo a continuous injection for 12 hours every day. She suffers from thalassemia, a blood disorder that affects 100,000 babies every year. Its victims, if they're to live beyond infancy, need regular blood transfusions. But these life-saving transfusions themselves cause a dangerous build-up of iron in the body, resulting in death, usually from a heart attack by the early 20s. The daily injection prevents the iron accumulating, but the treatment is distressing and inconvenient. Well, I find it very difficult, um, very painful, but I have to do it because I have to live, so... I've got a choice. <laughs> After eight years' research, a team at the Royal Free Hospital Medical School, headed by Dr. George Kontajorgis, has developed a drug that will do away with the daily injections. The tablet is taken by mouth, goes inside the gut, is absorbed from the gut, and it goes to the different parts of the body where iron is stored, mainly in the liver. When this tablet or the compound uh, is uh, going to find iron, it binds to iron very strongly and uh, iron then is then extruded in the urine and the feces. What difference would it make to you if there was a pill that you could just take twice or three times a day? Great, great difference. You know, it'd be like a new life to me. Tests on animals have shown that the drug is safe and effective, so how soon will it be available? We hope that it will be in the market within two years if we find the money to finance the toxicological studies. But uh, we are still hoping that somebody will come forward with this money. How much money are you talking about? I'm talking about a few hundred thousand pounds, unless uh, there is a pharmaceutical company who is interested to finance the toxicology and also the development of the tablet. In this country, about 20 people die each year rather than continue the daily ordeal of injections. But in third world and Mediterranean countries, where the condition is common, many sufferers don't receive the existing treatment because it is too expensive. The new drug is far cheaper and could be afforded by the poorest countries. Its introduction on the world market would save tens of thousands of lives every year. Gail Goodwin for Thames News. The news from British Medical Television and the World Health Network on Thursday the 2nd of November with Debbie Middleton and David Lawrence. Thalassemia, taking the pain out of pumping iron. Insomnia, is it lights out for benzodiazepines. Plus road safety, new research says categorically speed kills. Hello, a new drug promises to transform the lives of thalassemia sufferers. At present, patients with the genetic blood disorder need to spend 10 hours a day hooked up to an infusion pump. Daily infusions of desferioxamine are essential to prevent the build-up of harmful amounts of iron from monthly blood transfusions. Now, an oral chelating agent has proved just as effective at mopping up excess iron. Results of the latest trials with the drug called L1 will be released today at an international conference in London. Here's Jim McGuigan. Thalassemia is a recessive disorder of haemoglobin. It affects mainly people from Asia and the Mediterranean. Homozygous thalassemia affects about 400 people in the UK and millions worldwide. They need monthly blood transfusions to stay alive. These relieve the anemia, but an unwanted side effect is the build-up in the body of high concentrations of iron. To prevent iron levels getting too high, patients must give themselves a daily 10-hour infusion of desferioxamine. But now there's an alternative. The new drug was developed here at the Royal Free Hospital School of Medicine. From here, supplies of the drug are sent to researchers in more than eight countries throughout the world. The new chelating agent works in much the same way as desferioxamine. It binds to the iron in the blood so it can be cleaned out of the body in the urine. But unlike desferioxamine, L1 can be taken orally. Before it can be broken down in the stomach, it's rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream. The drug has been tested in 126 patients in eight different countries. 
Today, doctors from these centres will tell an international meeting in London that the new treatment is every bit as good as current pump therapy. I'm very pleased from the results of the multi-centre clinical trials and we are looking forward to expand these trials and also to receive much more funding for uh, expanding the trials and involve many other patients who are ready to participate. Optimism is not just confined to doctors. The patients are in no doubt about what it will mean for them. I wouldn't um, have to have um, injections every night, which are painful, um, five, days, five days a week. Um, but I know that if I don't use the pump, I'll die. So that's why I carry on doing it, because I don't want to die. But hopefully there'll be a pill soon and it'll take and it'll be better for us. Although we have to have, I have to have blood transfusion still, the pill is better than the daily injections. It's crucial that trials of L1 are extended to test fully the safety and effectiveness of the new agent. The future potential of the drug is enormous. It would benefit dialysis patients, people with sickle cell anemia and myelofibrosis. But though the drug is cheap to make, so far neither the pharmaceutical industry nor government have come up with the funds needed to give L1 a chance to reach the market. Life-saving drug for treating thalassemia, a blood disease that kills thousands of children across the world. What's unusual about the new drug is that it's been brought to market by a company based in the developing world. Traditionally, it's Western companies who monopolize drug development and approval. Vivian Parry reports on how India's patent laws have let a Bombay company steal a march on the West. Nita is just one of thousands of children in India suffering from thalassemia. People with this severe form of inherited anemia are unable to make normal red blood cells, so oxygen can't be carried around the body. There's a miraculously simple treatment. Blood transfusions every two to four weeks provide healthy blood cells and keep the patient alive and well. But there's a price. The treatment itself actually kills. The constant addition of new blood eventually produces a fatal buildup of iron. To counter this deadly effect of the transfusion treatment, a drug is available which breaks down the excess iron. The trouble is, you have to spend 40 hours a week connected up to a pump whilst the drug is infused. It also costs £4,000 per patient per year. That would be difficult for any country to afford, but for India, it's well nigh impossible. But now there's an alternative, and the person responsible is a doctor working back in London. Dr. George Conter-Georges has made it his life's mission to find a new drug to treat iron overload in thalassemics. I originally came from Cyprus and uh, I lost two cousins who suffer from thalassemia. So I was well aware of the problems uh, patients face. I tried to concentrate in my research area into the development of a, of a new drug for the removal of excess iron from the body. As long ago as 1981, he discovered a compound that worked. Like the existing treatment, the new drug binds to the iron which has built up in the body. The resulting compound is soluble and is excreted. However, what makes the new drug different is that you can take it as a simple pill. It's absorbed through the stomach. It's also easy and cheap to make. The compound was patented in the USA and Europe, but potential profits for a drug aimed at the developing world are low. The patent rights passed from company to company, but the drug stayed firmly in the laboratory. I found this drug in 1981, and uh, since that uh, year, I tried continuously to liaise uh, with companies uh, for its development and its application to patients. And it was very frustrating that uh, not many pharmaceutical companies in the West took up this initiative. Unusually, the action shifted to the developing world after an Indian company approached Dr. Conta Georges with an interesting proposition. 
Unlike the West, India has an effect no product patents to prevent the drug being copied. This meant that they could produce it and take it swiftly to market. The company funded the largest trial of the drug to date. The results were enough to convince the Indian government that a license should be granted for the company to sell the drug in India. They'd beaten the rest of the world to the new drug. It's now available throughout India at around a fifth of the price of the old treatment. Its affordability and its ease of use has transformed the lives of thalassemic patients like Nita. What was it like in the past and what was your routine like compared to how it, it is now? It was quite restricted. I couldn't go out because of that. I had to be with my parents all the time. Now I can move out with friends and it's not painful. For the drug to be sold in the West, further more stringent trials will be required, but the Indian company won't be doing that work. They simply haven't the money, either to buy the patent, or more importantly, to fund the extensive trials required by Europe and the USA. Curiously, the pace of development on this drug in the West has now speeded up. Although it may still take a few years for the new drug to reach the rest of the world, in India, it's already proved its worth. It has made a lot of difference. Look at the older treatment, uh, it was expensive, and a number of families could not easily afford it. Everybody used to think that the children would be dead by the age of 20. Now they look at the whole problem in a very different way. They're very positive that these children would live for normal lifespan, that they could probably marry, have their own life. Uh, they could be very important members of the family. The Indian company acknowledges that there are some side effects for a small number of people who take the drug. The more stringent Western trials may reveal further problems. But for patients like Nita, the chance to use the new drug couldn't have come sooner.